I believe in you. I deeply believe in you that you can do everything that you want to do. Um, like your dreams and you can achieve every goal you have. You just have to work on it and you just have to believe that you can as well. But, Or maybe you just only believe in the belief that I believe in you. There's also an option. And with this being said, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the Self-Development with Tactics fucking podcast. And I'm happy to be here. Because I'm just happy. Because I know somehow that I can impact a lot of people. Eventually. Eventually. Um, it always depends on how big this is gonna get, you know. But I have the opportunity and I do have the possibility to do that. And so I'm trying to go for it. Because why actually not? And as you can see, I actually shaved my fucking hair, or actually cut my fucking hair, didn't shave them. And yeah, new style, same me, same microphone, and same text, because we're actually going through um, 12 Rules of Life by Jordan B. Peterson again, um, which isn't bad that we're going through this one as, uh, again. It is great. It's quite a great one, at my point of view. It's it's really great with a lot of great insights and a, I think a lot of great knowledge. I would say, um, and a lot of things I didn't know, which is always something um, pretty great. And I really don't want to say that I know uh, just everything from every fucking book. I don't, but I still know a lot of shit by the time because I've been gone through just a lot of fucking shit. But yeah, I think I'm gonna start read just ahead. Because, yeah, to just not lose any fucking time. So, uh, the important part is that there is a, you know, I really suggest you to go through uh, the, especially the second episode, so the episode before this episode, um, because this is just somehow, um, yeah, quite the second part of the first rule. Because last time we were only just going through the first rule, um, because it's extremely long and extremely detailed, and this is going to just be the kind of second part or the part that's going on with the first rule. So I would totally suggest you to go to the first one. Um, so yeah, the important part is that there is a primordial calculator in your brain that monitors signals to figure out your position in society. It recognizes behavior from others, sometimes triggered by your own behavior, and infers your social standing. It then adjusts your perceptions, values, emotions, and actions. And it, 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 really mo it would really make sense that it actually just somehow controls or changes your um, emotions. Because I do think that, you know, if somebody is just mean to you and if a lot of people are just mean to you, the normal per person, quote unquote, normal, normal person, um, is just going to feel bad, you know. Um, the not normal person, quote unquote, normal person again, <laughs> um, I think is going to think like, okay, yeah. Those people are just fucked up and I'm not, not going to do something with them. But that's another story. Um, but it just would make sense for me, um, just, you know, as the core of this somehow statement or of this knowledge, if you will. So uh, the responsible part of the brain is the medial prefrontal cortex, um, which actually seems to be, so the cortex actually seems to be the main Somehow, I guess, I'm only guessing, I don't really know. It seems to be just the main part of the brain. If I'm just thinking right, because the cortex just plays such a big role in such a lot of things, whether it be sleep, you know, besides the amygdala, I think it's called, then here, then I guess, you know, just, yeah, like emotions and actions and, you know, whatsoever. I guess the, the cortex and also the prefrontal cortex um, just play a, a pretty big role. So if others know noto, it's again the fucking word, the koto, I think it's K-O-W-T-O-W. -O -W. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm now saying koto. To you, this feeds this part of your brain, elevating your internal perceptions of social status. If others de denigrate and belittle you, you interpret this as low, sta low social status. Keeping an alpha male monkey in front of a of a one-way mirror where he can't see the submissive behavior of other males lowers his serotonin. So keeping an alpha male monkey in front of a one-way mirror where he can't see the submissive behavior of other males lowers his serotonin, 
which basically for me just means okay if he doesn't see other people just acting like being lower in in terms of the position than him he's feeling just lower as well because there's nothing to just somehow compare himself to does that make sense is it even just just normal for people because you know if monkeys are doing it chances are pretty high that we are doing it as well and i guess we do so does this also mean that we are somehow just um yeah really comparing us to to other people just by nature could this be a point because i i think i think we actually do because it's such a big topic that we you know a lot of people say you shouldn't just compare yourself to others which is completely true because you will never see what they have done to actually get to this point if you're thinking like okay you know this is just this person is so much better at doing whatever and and you just clearly don't know what they did maybe they were working on this certain skill for the last 10 years maybe they weren't and maybe they're just talented you don't know um unless you know you're their best friend or you know whatsoever but i'm just not just taking this as an option <laughs> um but yeah i'm just gonna get my light and then i'm gonna uh, keep recording just really 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 fast uh the problem there might be that um uh, yeah it's fucking bright it's not that great um the other light as well um, but yeah, you see me a little bit, a little bit better at least. Um, isn't there anything I can put above it? Would be great. Um, um, I'm sorry for doing this right now. I could have done it earlier, but I just right now that the light or in terms of the light the video isn't doing that well or not or at least not as well as I wanted to do no that's clearly not working <laughs> um, but I know something different uh, which is some sort of a cup and this cup, uh, yeah. Gonna let it bounce off a little bit, so that is just, yeah, it's clearly making me a little bit brighter. So yeah, let's go on with the episode. Um, and I hope the light is great. I hope it's not somehow bad or even worse than just before. But I don't think so. So it's clearly better. Yeah, it's clearly better. For, at, at least for me. Um, so important connections with mental illness. Anxiety. Lower status people really live, really live in greater threat. Having fewer resources available to deal with problems and emergencies. This restricts serotonin se secretion, which increases stress levels, makes you more impulsive and reactive to situations. You must be ready to survive. You know, and this is clearly, this is clearly just, you know, the thing the brain should be doing. The brain isn't there to make you happy. It, it really isn't. You know, it's not there or it's not, it is not, it's, um, uh, it's not his, his, its task or it's not what it should be doing. It should let you survive. And this is the only thing that, <laughs> that it should be do. You know, that's really the only thing. You should only survive. And it should make you happy. So unless you're surviving or you just have to survive. You just have to survive and everything else doesn't quite matter. And um, th this is quite, I think, it's, it's from Tony Robbins. It's from Tony Robbins. And he then says, okay, this is the reason why you have to create the framework for your brain. You have to create the whole structure for your brain to actually be happy. You know, because your happy isn't, you know, the thing that's going to make you happy. It just lets you f survive. And that's the only thing. You just have to create the framework for your brain to be happy. Whether it's just, you know, consciously just managing the people that are around you or consciously just doing things you like to do or consciously whatsoever. You know, you have the, um, yeah, you should be doing that. Uh, you jump at more short-term opportunities that appear, not able to put them off for long-term rewards. 
I also wonder if people with lower social status are more separate, des desperate to, s to signal a higher level but in an unprofitable way. For example, buying expensive handbags. In this state of anxiety, it would be difficult to focus on a long-term solution, which might be education. Depression. Um, why we get six hypotheses, which seems to be a book as well, so why we get sick, um, which is, I think, also a great book, you know, and it's also um, available as a summary on the alanchang.com website, which is basically the exact same website that we are on right now. And it's a great website. I deeply love it because it is so detailed. It's so fucking detailed. You know, every single um, summary there is on this um, on this um, on this website it's just so detailed and I really feel like that you do not have to just read the book just it feels for me more like you know you just don't have to read the book to actually get all the informations or at least the most important informations of this book um, but yeah it's, you, you can't compare it you can't compare like a thousand words to three thousand words you know there might be a lot of fluff, totally. There totally might be a lot of fluff, but yeah, I do not really want to say that the whole book is fluff or just a third of the book is fluff. But I don't know, you know, I really don't know, but it's definitely something or somehow a quite different experience when you're reading the book than when you're just maybe listening to me or reading this, what I'm just reading right now on your own. You know, it's completely another experience. It completely is. And it's still the same thing with an audiobook. The audiobook is definitely something different than just quite my audio version, if you just want to call it like this. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so I don't know, you know, I don't know what's, you know, or what could be better for you if it is really just this summary or if it is really just reading the whole book. You know, it could be um, just... Yeah, it could be this or that or these or those or I don't know. <laughs> um, so, but I think I'll I, I just have to go uh, through why we get sick. And there's also another book about health and whatsoever. And I'm quite hoping that I that I just can get some valuable information about actually staying healthier and just knowing what's going on with me quite you know which is I guess very important to actually just understanding and and first of all recognizing that there's something go uh, going on with you and actually just finding a way on you know how you can solve this problem for you um, I guess a lot of people do just have um, yeah health problems this is just the unfortunate truth that you know people just eat shit people don't exercise people don't do just the really really simple not easy i always just i always just like to to underline these things it's it's not easy it's definitely not easy it's not easy working out more than i don't know one time a week it is not but it's simple you know everybody could do it but not everybody does it you know and this is then the point and it's also the same thing with healthy eating everybody could do it you know it's it's very simple but it's not easy you know it just takes some effort and it just takes some discipline and maybe also some willpower if you're just really attached to eating, you know. But um, everybody could do it. Um, so the why we six uh, hypothesis that mass media is a novel in uh, in very un <laughs> environmental trigger that makes you compare to the best of millions of billions of other people. On this un uh, preceded that pre. I'm very sorry. Pre is, this, is it precedent? I'm just going to spell it. U N P R E Z E D E N T E D. World stage, you are not particularly good at anything. Even worse, social media makes you compare to the highlight reel, uh, reel like R E E L, of people that you know, uh, that you know personally. In the past, being in a small tribe, you might compare you to only 100 people, which is totally fucked up as well. But it seems to be better than just, you know, comparing yourself to the really, really highest people on the fucking planet. Um, you might be a decent hunter and get pride from that, but then others upstage you. Depressions 
uh, depression serves a function to pause your activity and re-evaluate so you might realize you're better at harvesting berries instead. Which totally is the truth. It is totally the truth. And it makes sense, you know. All the things we're having, all the things that's going on with your body and my body and your mind and your mind, whatsoever, whatever it be in nature, whatever it be in your fucking life, it just has a meaning and it just has a purpose. Whether it be crying. I don't know the purpose of crying, but there is definitely a purpose of crying and feeling bad. Maybe it's just, you know, the way of your body to showing you, okay, something isn't right. You should be doing something about something, you know. Depression. It seems to be depression is the way your body shows you, okay, maybe you should be doing something different. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe you're just not the best at it. Maybe you can't survive through doing what you're doing because others are clearly doing it better than you. What's, you know, happiness, I guess, is also something. Maybe it just shows you, okay, you're doing the right thing. You're doing just, you know, I don't know, you're the best at something. I don't fucking know, but it clearly shows you something as well. And it is just somehow something that I quite realized right now, that everything that's going on with your fucking body is just something that just is important. Somehow. In some aspect of life. And yeah. This is just my little speech. Um, nowadays, it is hard to be dem demonstrably good at anything and you may not receive the subordinate signals from anyone else. Thus, one might get locked in depression. In this novel environment, the people who can escape the depressive atmosphere at a, are at a relative fitness advantage, even fixing ability. And their traits will be selected for. Interestingly, the modern world may also provide greater dominance signals than ever before. For example, 1 million followers, but this might be uh, counterforced by uh, relative positioning in the ecosystem. Uh, for example, Becky has 2 million. Yeah, totally is. You know, um, there are number ones. And you might also be a number one. I just wish you'd be the number one because I guess it feels great. But I don't know. I quite, I, I'm quite thinking about if it is actually great to be the number one. You know, all the eyes at are at you quite, which is nothing, I think, bad for me at least. You know, I, ha I haven't just, you know, kind of kind of had this kind of feeling. I have never been just so famous and, you know, whatsoever that everybody's looking at me. But... I kind of feel like, you know, some people will just be able to handle it and some people just won't be able to handle it. But um, but also, isn't it like, you know, there's no one to beat somehow? Or do you just get a pleasure of just seeing, okay, you are the best and all the other people are quite just, you know, way beneath you somehow, you know, whether it be your follow account, whether it be, you know, your fitness and you have won a lot of prizes I don't know, I don't know, but I know, but at least you can always target yourself. You can also be your enemy, you know, quite just saying like you just want to be better than you were yesterday, which is I think nothing wrong, and which is I guess something. And if I'm remembering correctly, this was something that I um, was listening to the last weekend. I think it was the last weekend, and it was interesting because I love. I deeply love listening to motivational speeches, whether it be from Gary Vaynerchuk, whether it be from Les Brown, whether it be from Will Smith or The Rock. You know, I just love them all because they are so inspiring. And everybody can do this, you know. It might not be just for everybody. It might not inspire everybody, but it is a great way to be inspired and motivated to just take your leap and just try it out and just give your best. And... um the Rock said, yeah, you know, himself or he himself is his own enemy or his own opponent because he's always trying to be better than he was a year ago, a week ago and whatsoever. There might be setbacks, totally. You know, you might not be just having the greatest set in the gym than, um, like, you know, I don't know, forever. You know, you might have had a better one before, but, but I don't know. You know, you can always just go for being the best somehow. Um, those are more vo vulnerable positions. Chronically deprived of pleasure may also be more uh, sub subsidable to drugs and alcohol. 
I think, yeah. I think, yeah, the people actually um, who are feeling bad and who are not just quite, um, yeah, some are feeling great that in their skin maybe, that, you know, chances are way higher that they're actually just, you know, taking drugs and drinking alcohol. Even though I don't understand, you know, I do just have to say, okay, alcohol is also a drug. So why do people always say, like, drugs and alcohol, you know? But, you know, because it's quite the same. <laughs> but yeah, shouldn't complain about that. There is totally something more um, debatable than that. Um, there is indeed great uh, comorbidity between anxiety and depression. What is a comorbidity? Comorbidity. 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 Which means relation to or denoting a medical condition that co occurs with another. So the comorbidity between anxiety and depression. They could have the same root because, or the root cause, law inferred social status. In 12 Rules of Life, Peterson suggests that some behavior can can solve anxiety and depression. Regularity of sleep and proper circadian rhythm can correct negative emotion. Yeah, I guess so, you know. I do also feel that if I'm just, you know, not sleeping, not, not at all, but if I'm sleeping just very, very less, I do really feel that my temper is just, yeah, I'm, I'm way more explosive than, than I'm just used to be i'm in general i'm pretty aggressive i do just have to admit i'm very fucking aggressive i don't know why um <laughs> actually the last episode we found out uh, maybe a cause of why i might be um somehow um aggressive so go check out the other episode if you want to know this <laughs> um but i don't know you know um sleep is definitely something that can just create a better framework for yourself and um, I would totally suggest you to go through um, Why We Sleep, um, which is actually a summary of a quite great book on this website as well. And I also just um, did a few episodes on it, so I went through the whole summary. And if you want to check it out, there are several episodes, you know, either on my YouTube and or on the podcast as well, which is great. It was a great book. And actually, yesterday I was listening to a Tim Ferriss podcast Um which was something I haven't before, to be honest. I was only just listening to the Gary Vee audio experience because, because I don't know, because I just, you know, was maybe used to it and I just enjoyed it. And I was thinking like, you know, I don't want to try something else. But then I just, just thought like, you know, why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I just take the leap or take the opportunity to, yeah, just go through something else, you know, once somehow and I enjoyed it and it was a great interview it maybe was three 353 something like this three I will say three I'm rolling the R I don't know why um, <laughs> um but yeah she also said um so he was interviewing a girl or a woman she's 42 I guess by now and and they were all also talking about why we sleep and she actually bought I think a few like maybe it was even hundred books just or a hundred uh just copies yeah it is copies uh copies of why we sleep because she enjoyed it so much and this was something great to see okay that you know because because i know what's going on in this book maybe it's just because i'm an insider and i know what's going on there that i can say okay i can relate to that i can say also okay it was a great book it it really was and um, because she said it is really, really also just confirmed that, you know, all the informations are given, they are somehow confirmed by another person who is very, very, um, it's not critical in English, but it's, um, you know what I mean, you know, that they, that he doesn't believe anything, he's just, just reading, and he also said, and, and or there's also some testimonial of him in the book or something like this, I don't know what it's called, but um, there's something of, of him in this book that just says, okay, the informations given in this book are actually just right, or chances are very, very great, high, or very high, that they are right. Um, so yeah, it is a great book. So, eat a fat, protein, heavy breakfast. Anxious which is also a point, I guess, 
for just you know solving anxiety and depression so eat a fat and protein heavy breakfast anxious and depressed people hyper secrete insulin in response to carbs which will cause a hypoglycemia and cause psychological instability fuck fuck not because i'm doing it and i'm feeling the just anxiety but i don't know you know it just seems to be so from another planet for me and it seems to be so unfucking no <laughs> just it really just seems for me to be from fucking mars or something i i've just never thought about actually yeah i don't know i don't know so so positive feedback loops can exist here uh, one infers low social status from the environment perhaps through bullying or controlling parents this attracts negative attention from others who treat them as subordinates with with which further reinforces self uh, perception of low status it also promotes stress stress which is um, psycho psychologically costly and can cause impulsive short-term decisions it also encourages behavior that entrenches the low status, like refusing to ask for promotions, which continues to reinforce low, stale, low social status. So it seems to be just, yeah, as they also say, it's a loop. It's a loop of always, loop of always getting worse and worse and worse and worse and fucking fucking worse. Which is totally fucked up. And... Yeah, maybe there is somebody who is just going through the summary and who is just listening to me, who is just understanding now, okay, there is actually a loop and I just have to get out of it somehow, you know. And I guess if you just know that there is a loop and um, that you know, okay, these are the reasons for the loop or this could be the loop. So just describing the loop, I guess this is one of the first steps for people actually to to being able to just change it up. Thus, Peterson su suggests that you need to signal your higher social status through external body language, first of all, but also internally in your self-beliefs. People will then treat you as com competent and able, which will kick off a virtuous cycle. Some experimental evidence suggests that alter alternations in body language can change mental perception. Smiling makes you happier, adopting power poses can make you feel more confident. The evidence here is shaky, CF, whatever CF means, power posing, Amy Cuddy. Um, it is basically, um, I don't know, it is very hard for me to believe as well. The thing is, we've also seen with the lobsters that, you know, somehow the emotion or motion creates the emotion. And this is just ex the real exact same thing as Tony Robbins is always talking about. Motion creates emotion. And Harvard also seems to be, yeah, they validated it somehow through these power poses, which are like this, your, your hands on your hips, and like, you know, the catapult with your hands behind your, um, behind your head and your, um, yeah, and the back of your head. And these are power poses. And it really seems to be that they are actually changing how you're feeling. It could be the case. I don't fucking know. Um, but I somehow feel like it as well. I don't know. You know, it's just somehow... Okay, if I'm sitting like this and I'm just way broader and I'm also just creating a triangle somehow. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I know it should be making me feel better that it's actually making me feel better. So... But yeah. Um... Thus rule, thus, rule one, stand up straight with your shoulders back, but also speak your mind, put your desires forward and dare to be dangerous. This is the beginning of developing self-respect, accepting the demands of life, occupying your territory and standing up to tyranny, tyranny and oppression. Uh, this is a variant of fake it till you make it. It also cooperates the less fundamentally useful mating rituals of signaling status through expensive possessions and embellishing accomplishments i quite don't uh, i don't agree i just have to say because so it seems less fundamentally useful um because it all also seems to be like okay you're um 
yeah you're just you know doing like okay you're processing something you know something expensive something materialistic expensive and therefore just feeling great because of it can somehow relate to this i really can but i'm not quite sure i'm really not because i i think like it could make sense and harvard somehow validated it so i don't know it's very complicated um, strength of character and capacity for destruction are the same are the same the ability to respond with aggression and violence decreases the probability that actual aggression will become necessary peterson knows that pdsd in war comes not from horrific things happening to them but as a result of witnessing their own violent behavior this never saw the capacity for oppression and bullying and bullying and now see history's terrible perpetrators. Uh, no, perpetrators. Um, doesn't this ignore the problem that there is such a thing as real ability and that one's low social status might be warned? Peterson acknowledges this but suggests that there are people who prey on those who behave submissively, which could cause perception of low status, then you really deserve and make it hard to crawl out of your vicious cycle. Instead, if you kick off the change by appearing confident, people will treat you as though you have value. You get positive responses and this makes you less anxious, which makes you better at conversations or conversation and social interaction. As you enjoy things more, you will seek it out more and so forth. So you basically somehow are creating this, this good and positive cycle of, of being positive and uh, of value and just high in status but yeah um, this is the end with the episode I hope you've enjoyed it I think there was just a lot of value in this episode I, I really just think that um, and yeah I wish you the best health, wealth, happiness and success I'm not going to eat something and yeah um, just still remember how you're going to be remembered and maybe you can do this by just giving something back to the people or to the world whether they have given you something or not, doesn't matter. And with this being said, I'll see you the next time.